Welcome to my new calculus channel. My name is John Gabriel. Today I would like to talk with you about what it means for a concept to be well defined. Uh, consider that throughout the history of humanity there has been nothing published on the subject of what exactly it means for a concept to be, to be well defined. Now you can go to sites like Wikipedia, but they're just the juvenile musings and rantings of a specific clique or group of people composed of the mainstream academia, such as professors, math educators, etc. They're all a bunch of fools, uh, simply because there are so many ill-formed concepts in mathematics. and I'm going to talk about these today. So <clears throat> to make it easy for you to understand what it means for a concept to be well defined, I have identified four uh, characteristics uh, or four properties if you if you wish. And these will help you to identify or to figure out if any concept that you imagine is well formed or well defined. So the first thing is that it must be reifiable, either tangibly or intangibly, okay? What that means is you should be able to construct an instance of whatever you imagine. Okay, so if you cannot do that, then you're unable to get past the first most important uh, property, which is reification. And so your concept is no doubt going to be junk. The second property is that it must be defined in terms of attributes which it possesses, not those that it lacks. So I'll give an example of that in a minute, but normally when we talk about human beings, we don't talk about them in terms of branches or waterfalls or something else that's totally unrelated to them. We talk about them in terms of what they possess. So unless you can pass the first two of those properties or you can satisfy those two properties, your concept is no doubt junk. The third most important property is that once you are able to reify and uh, define your concept properly, it should not lead to any logical contradictions. If ever you have a logical contradiction, or uh, some kind of conclusion that you derive from your concepts that is uh, not correct, then obviously your concept is junk. And finally, <clears throat> the last uh, property is that it must exist in a perfect platonic form. In other words, it's a nomenon. Uh, a nomenon is a perfect concept and does not require human thought or alien thought or any other thought. Now you can remember these four properties by the acronym RACI, reifiable, attributes, contradictions, and independence. Now let's see some examples. So unicorn, is that a valid concept? Well can you produce an instance of a unicorn? Well the answer to that is no. You cannot. You, I mean, drawing a unicorn doesn't mean that it's a valid concept. Uh, you can take a two-year-old and he can scribble all over a, a sheet of paper and say that that's an elephant or a monster, but that's just nonsense. So unless you can actually reify a concept, it's a junk concept. And a unicorn is a perfect example. There are many, uh, but... I want to keep this as simple as possible so that most of you idiots can understand. Now, the next uh, part that I'd like to talk about are attributes. Now, an irrational number, what the hell is that? Well, look here. It's defined by the idiots in modern academia as a number that is not rational. What does that mean? That tells us, <laughs> that tells us what it is not. 
not what it is. It tells us it is not rational, but what on earth is an irrational number? It's insufficient to say that it is a number that is not rational. That is an attribute that it does not possess. An irrational number does not possess the attribute of rationality, but that does not define an irrational number. I'll tell you what defines an irrational number. It's the, it's the distance or uh, the, the magnitude or the volume or the mass that cannot be measured. Okay, so a number by definition is the measure of a magnitude. And no one before me uh, and after Euclid understood what is a number. I was the first to explain exactly in a definition what is a number and so let's let me let me just show you there's an article on linkedin here called how we got numbers and unless you read this article i don't care if you're the world's greatest professor you or if you won five fields prizes or if you won a nobel prize or whatever you're a moron if you haven't read this article okay you do not have a clue what it means to be a number so the first thing you need to do is read and study this article very carefully because this tells you what it means to be a number. Right. So that's the first thing. Then the next uh, part that I'd like to talk about is besides being, uh, besides being reifiable and possessing the attributes, it must not lead to any logical contradiction. So if you take a look at infinitesimals, that leads to so many contradictions. For example, Euler stated that 1 divided by infinity is equal to 0. Um, that is such utter rubbish. And basically what it says is that, is that if you had infinitely many zeros and you added them all up, you'd get 1, right? So once you get a logical contradiction, well, then you can know for certain that your concept is junk. And finally, the last point is that it must be independent of any human thought, okay, or any thought whatsoever. So if you take a look at the geometry of the Greeks, which is perfect, um, pi, for example, is independent of human thought. It doesn't matter if anyone ever thought of pi. It would always exist. It has always existed and will always exist, even if nothing ever had to exist whether if the universe was void and there was no life and no matter of any kind pi would still exist as a perfect concept in other words as a nomenon okay so now another example of an ill-formed concept is a limit uh, when there is no valid construction of real numbers so You'll often hear idiot professors tell you, oh, yes, the real numbers are very well defined through uh, equivalent Cauchy sequences, which is utter bullshit. Um, they have no idea what is a number. They do not and have not ever understood what it means to be a number. And of course, infinity is another example, and it falls into the same category as infinitesimals. Um, so you can read... Uh, the full article on, no, it's not that one. You can read the full article here on, on LinkedIn, and what it, what it means for a concept to be well-defined. And I've explained a lot more than I can discuss in just one video. So please go ahead <clears throat> and read this article so that you can understand what it means. Then the last point that I'd like to talk about here is... <laughs> You know, the theories of Einstein and Hawking, which are utter rubbish. Um, Einstein, for example, didn't have a clue what time is. Neither, neither does Hawking. Uh, you know, so if you want to understand what is time, you need to once again go to LinkedIn and read my article on what is time. And you will see <clears throat> uh, exactly the well-formed definition of time. So... Uh, if you're a physicist or somebody who intends to understand physics and to be uh, an excellent scientist, you need to understand the concept of time because it's vitally important. And so I would advise you to come along and read this article 
here on LinkedIn, what is time? Okay, so <clears throat> uh, in this video, which is not going to be too long and it's going to end shortly, I've covered some very important properties of what it means for a concept to be well defined or well formed. Uh, and unless you have a well formed concept, you're really not talking about anything that has value. Most of it will just be junk. It will lead to theory that is so complex and it eventually crumbles under its own inconsistencies and weight. So those four properties that I mentioned um, are the most important. The properties are to be reifiable, to possess the attributes which define them, to not lead to any logical contradictions, and to be independent of human thought or any other thought. Those are the important properties. So I hope I've been able to uh, educate you a little bit more, whether you are a professor of mathematics or a, a winner of a Fields Medal. Um, you're still a moron, in my opinion. So I hope that you've been able to learn something and you're humble enough to actually go and study these topics that I'm talking about, because I do know better than you and I do know what I'm talking about. Um, I'm called a crank, but I wear that label proudly. And uh, so far, nobody has been able to prove me wrong. And don't think that you will be the first, because uh, I have built on the brilliance of the ancient Greeks. Um, their clarity of thought was not matched by anyone who came before or after them. Well, this is the new Calculus Channel. I'm John Gabriel. Till next time, goodbye.